Well, thank you all for being here today. It's uh, quite a pleasure to, to talk about what we're doing. I know Jamie and I are really enthused about what we're doing. We like to share what's going on in our operations, but uh, we've got two sons in the operation now, and, and it's the uh, best time for me, even though this is probably my 40th year of farming. <clears throat> I still think there's another 10 there somewhere, so. and it's going to be enjoyable with having those two in the operation. But uh, start out with, uh, we went through studying cover crops, uh, probably started that five or six years ago. Didn't jump right into it till we till we done some studying and understood where we wanted to head with it. Uh, we started out with with a Miller sprayer. This is basically a bare bones power plant. You've got uh, the tanks taken off and the booms taken off the front. And um, we started putting this uh, this piece together four years ago. Um, where we put a, a gandy box in the middle. Uh, this thing's evolving every year, and we're actually evolving quite a bit for this coming year. I'll try to go through that a little bit later. But um, gandy box uh, with hoses from the gandy box out to the boom, um, drops made for the boom. These are kind of some, some steps we're going through. Um, this is what it looks like in the cornfield. Uh, this is three years ago. Uh, probably the first thing we learned is we don't wanna, wanna be seeding that late in corn if we can get by with it. We'd rather be seeding earlier in the crop, uh, crop year. We like to try to get started in the middle of August if we can, seeding, uh, seeding cover crops into standing corn. Uh, soybeans, we'll seed into standing soybeans, but we really want the beans pretty much full of yellow before we, uh, before we start seeding into there. And, um, one of the issues there is uh, if you get a lot of leaf drop before you seed, you're going to put a lot of seed on top of the leaves and probably not going to get as good a germination and establishment. If you get in there when they're pretty much full of yellow, uh, you get the seed down there and then you start dropping leaves on top of it. It actually helps to hold some moisture in there. and. Timing-wise, uh, if we can seed when it's pretty much full of yellow, uh, things get established, and uh, we pretty much don't get any cover crop established up into the beans by, by that timing. And uh, We did seed some a little bit earlier than that this time, and uh, asked Patrick what the field looked like when he was cutting beans in there. He said, I could see a, a mat down there, but it, it just wasn't an issue for him. It wasn't wasn't tall enough to, to be an issue, but uh, standing corn, uh, this is actually <coughs> second generation because the, the green hoses on there are inch and a half hoses. The original setup uh, had 36 one inch hoses on it. Uh, we found out pretty quick that, that a one inch Ventura on, uh, on that candy box was not big enough to get some of the volumes we wanted to get of cover crop seed into it. It was just an issue of trying to get seed into an airstream through a smaller hole and um, worked with Gandhi and, and they developed a inch and a half Ventura then, stainless steel Ventura that had a lot bigger hole in it and we were able to, to get the speed out of the machine that we wanted to at that point in time. So uh, this, is, this is more like when we want to be seeding. You can see the corns quite a bit greener than it was in that first picture. And, and that just goes back to part of our evolution is, is trying to get it seeded earlier every year. So um, another piece that's been pretty handy is we've got cameras in that seed box or underneath that seed box to watch that we're not getting any overflow of seed into, into those Venturas. And we can kind of gauge our speed from that. If we start to see some of that overflow, we can back it down a little bit and still get get the rate on we're wanting because it's uh, it's controlled based off the ground speed of what we're running. <clears throat> Just a picture in, in tassel high corn that booms all the way up at that point. Um, I was, was spraying and seeding in 
in a field this year, uh, this was two years ago, where we didn't have quite as tall a corn, but I was actually in some 12 foot tall corn with that machine, tassels were touching the, the miller sign on the front of it, and we weren't breaking anything off. Uh, that's where you get later in the season, the stock gets a little more brittle, you don't want to don't want to be out there doing it, but uh, and you don't want to get in there at the point that where guys will see green snap once in a while, you kind of stay out of the field at that point in time too. So, middle of August, the last of August is kind of our window. We like to have all of our seeding done by the middle of September if we can, just to, to give it the growing season it needs to get established, right? <clears throat> we're not. I mean, the only thing we're knocking over with that setup, the question was, will the combine pick up what we're knocking over? We're not knocking anything over outside of what we're, what we're turning on the ends. It'll pick that up usually if it's, I mean, if you run over it, it's going to be mice core down. I done some calculating on, on what I'm, we might be losing, and I don't think in a half mile long field we're losing over a bushel of the acre. I don't think we're losing that much. Part of that, uh, we've been in that field before, corn and bean fields both, uh, at least two times, if not three, on some bean fields where we're spraying two passes of liberty. But uh, as long as your booms are matched up with the same same boom as your spray boom, you follow the same pass, you're, you're not really going to be doing a whole lot more damage than, than you were the first time. You see on picture here, the black uh, piece on the bottom, that was added the first year there, it just hadn't been added when that first picture was taken, but that holds that uh, tube down in, in the row there. Uh, we now have uh, just a little sheet metal or plate diffuser that we weld to the bottom of that that helps scatter the seed a little bit more in the corn. Um, this is a picture of the way we're filling the machine with the uh, Right now we're using a what's called a seed train from from Yetter. Um, looking at some different options there because this thing's not the fastest thing in the world, but uh, it's a whole lot faster than handling bags clear up there. So. <clears throat> this is a a picture of some custom work I was doing in a bean field. Really don't like to be in a bean field as late as that is, but that was. Um, that field's been tiled quite a bit since we were in there. We couldn't get in there because of the moisture in the field, but shows what we're doing. Um, shows the diffuser there that we had originally, and then we've cut that down to where it's only about two inches wide and going through. And we just leave that on for corn and beans both now. Um, that thing's quite a process to meet something coming down the road when you're looking at that thing. Had a few, couple different sickles. I've, you could tell they were looking at that and looking at that and looking at that, like they wanted to take that sickle right underneath there, but they didn't. Thank good, thank goodness, because I'd hate to have to pick them out of that ladder or something else in there. <clears throat> this is uh, two years ago. Um, had a really good season, I think, a lot better than what we had this past fall. Um, I guess shows there seeded on the 23rd of August and. Patrick went in there to harvest that on the on the 21st of September, and that was that was what we're seeing with the annual ryegrass, crimson clover, and radishes. Um, one thing, if you look real close, we, we've added that diffuser in there to try to get a little better coverage right under the row. Uh, feel like we're maybe missing a little bit right there, but then. In, in our operation, with two years of corn, a year of beans, and we're strip tilling everything going to corn, we'll come into this field here and, and strip till that in between the corn rows and, and still have quite a bit of the cover left. <clears throat> this is a field from this fall, which seemed like what we seeded into soybeans this fall done a lot better. And uh, This is actually oats, crimson clover, and radishes that we're seeding into standing soybeans um, at basically yellow, full of yellow field. I mean, you don't get the whole field yellow, but that's where you try to get. And then it's been strip tilled uh, for for next year's corn crop. And 
Um, this is a picture last spring that I was uh, spraying some uh, some of the annual ryegrass, clover, and radishes. But you don't see that, of course, the radishes aren't going to come through the winter. And, uh, with the annual ryegrass the way it is there, you don't see a lot of the clover. There's, there's some in there, not as much as we'd like to have, but that was where we're at the last spring. <clears throat> and then this is a picture from the planter tractor last spring. Uh, the weather pattern we got last spring, we didn't have a lot of time ahead of planting to, to get our kill done early. Uh, two years ago, we were spraying in March, and, and uh, everything was pretty much dead when we planted, but uh, that's what it looked like last spring when we were planting. Uh, the, the tracks you see in there are where the strip-till bar went, the tractor and strip-till bar and the, and the air cart on the back pretty much eliminate the, the cover crop in that in between that row there, but uh, I think we've got a good enough stand everywhere else that it really does a good job for us. This is this is, was two years ago when, we're, when we got the cover crop killed a little bit earlier, <clears throat> and then there's a picture of the planter uh, we're planting into that same field. Um, looks like a ought to look at what I'm doing and maybe clean the window before I take a picture like that so it doesn't look like there's birds following me all through the field. But, uh, that's, that's a good picture of, of what we're, we're wanting to be planting into then. This is a couple pictures here. I've got a set of four of each side of the road, but uh, we had a, a rain event last spring after we'd planted. These two fields were both planted. This this field on the south side of the road uh, is a neighbor that uh, actually made three passes with field cultivator to get this field planted. Uh, that's not excessive recreational tillage. I'm not sure what is, but uh, you can see the water standing there. This field's exactly directly across the road from that. 30 years of no-till, uh, 10 years of strip-till, Cover crops have been seeded in there three years now, and and the water infiltration is just a just a whole lot better than what it was on the other side of the road. I uh, just and I know that he's going to field cultivate bean stubble at least twice next spring too. Um, this is a field that that was wet this spring. We just never could get into it to kill the ra uh, cereal rye. Uh, we went in and, and planted it. Uh, that was on the 6th of June when we were in there planting it. The ride headed out, but it never really went to seed because we, we killed it that, that same afternoon. Uh, this was a video, which I can't get to show on, on this machine here, but it shows a picture of planting through that. Uh, this is a picture then of the stand we got uh, uh, 18 days later there from from when it was planted, so um, we didn't roll that down. We just killed it and left it go the way it was. Uh, feel pretty pretty positive that depending on what the weather is, if we need to let that cereal rye go and plant into it, I'd rather do it before it gets that tall, but plant into it and then kill it. Uh, I think we're probably better off than not getting enough time between killing it and planting it. You get uh, get a mat there. We, we saw a little bit of an issue with some of that this spring where it wasn't totally dead when we planted into it and um, hard to adjust a planter right and, and when you've got some patches like that. And so we saw a few holes in some fields just because we weren't getting it deep enough but the rest of the field was, was at the right depth. So. Uh, if I, I mean, that's coming down to the point if I had the option of, of having to plant it too quick after spraying it, we'd probably be better off to plant it and then spray it. So, <clears throat> A little bit of our chemistry program here. Um, probably the first thing that we did before we even got into uh, cover crops was to study chemistries and find out what chemistries we could use. And, and killing the cover crops and, and to be the herbicide program for the crop we're, we're planting there. 
Um, and most of what we've gone to is a, is a BASF program. Um, all of our beans are Liberty beans, and they're all seed beans, so we have to have uh, Liberty in the system. But uh, that comes in at a post application. But we're coming in with, uh, with this combination for the Power Max. We need the, the AMS. And, and the citric acid in the system helps to get the, the water pH down below 5. Actually, this year we were looking at about a 4 pH on what we're spraying. Uh, normal program, we're going to be using Optil Pro, which is Optil, and, and Outlook. The Outlook has, uh, or the, the Optil has a sharpen and pursuit in it. So you've got some residual there, uh, but not enough residual to cause an issue with next fall's uh, cover crops you're going to be seeding. Although this spring, with, with the lateness that we were getting into, we opted to just use uh, the uh, verdict package, which I'll show that in just a minute, in our soybeans, because we didn't want to put the pursuit down there and, and see an issue with it not getting broke down and having an issue with it when we planted cover crops the next fall. And this will be a program for soybeans where next, the, this coming fall, we'll be seeding oats, clover, and radishes into that, uh, going to, to first year corn. Uh, first year corn, where we'll be seeding annual ryegrass, clover, and radishes uh, into that this fall. Uh, basically, the same kind of a system, only we're using the verdict, which is sharpening an outlook. Uh, the Sharpen program just helps helps heat the power max up. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, the methylated seed oil is in there to go with the Sharpen. To, it's a requirement in the in the package there. Uh, we can go in then uh, if we need to with uh, post treatment of power max and on that program. Um, the second year corn, where we're going to be seeding cereal rye ahead of our soybeans for, for the next fall then, uh, we're using the, the program with uh, Sharpen and Power Max, and then coming in with Lumax uh, on a post treatment. The reason we like to do that is, is we like to get Callisto in the system one time, and, and this allows us to do that ahead of the cereal rye. Uh, Callisto will pretty much take out clover and radishes, so we, we can't use it in the system unless it's just ahead of the cereal rye. But uh, we've had uh, giant ragweed issues in the past, and, and we pretty much got those cleaned up, but we like to keep Callisto in there to, to help keep that program in place. <coughs> Here's kind of what we consider our Bible for, for spraying crop or spraying cover crops and killing them. Uh, you need them actively growing. Uh, two years ago, uh, we were spraying the end of March. Uh, that was because of the weather pattern we had. We had the heat and, and they were actively growing. Uh, this year we had trouble getting them sprayed because of the way the rainfall was. So you kind of got to play your cards however you get them dealt that, that spring. But, and you need, need a warm forecast for the next four or five days so that the they continue to actively grow, and and that's uh, allowing them to take up the, the fire max and or the glyphosate and, and get the kill done. One thing that uh, that's kind of probably the hardest piece of this package to do, and Jamie and I have talked about this before, is is we usually park a sprayer about four o'clock in the afternoon, so that there's at least four hours of sunlight for that crop or for those that cover crop to be growing and, and take up the power max better. If, if it starts shutting down, it's not going not gonna to take up the herbicide. So uh, using 10 to 12 gallon of water. <coughs> I think my 2 o'clock appointment with my bed last night is starting to get up to get, catch up to me. <coughs> you want good penetration of what you're spraying. Uh, you need a fine mist, but you don't uh, don't really want to use an AI nozzle, but an AI XR nozzle 
does a good job of directing that down in there. Again, getting the pH down below five. Talked a little bit about uh, where we're evolving to, the cover crop cedar. Uh, we've been approached by Miller sprayers to help them develop a product to put on their sprayers. Uh, we're gonna be going to a, a sulfured air tank on the sprayer instead of the Gandy box because it's a pressurized system. Uh, we think we can get higher rates and uh, also we're looking at, at developing a 120 foot cedar probably for this next fall and it's gonna require that to get seed out that far. But um, we've, with the second son coming back into operation full time this year, kind of looking for another enterprise to get into and we've had several guys talking to us about building cedars so we've kind of gotten into that business of of developing a cedar for existing market that's out there uh, and probably going to help Miller develop an OEM product to, to put on their machines. I think they'd like to do that for this fall so I don't know where we're where we're headed with that but it's kind of an interesting project to be working at. Something that I'm pretty sure Barry Fisher is the one that I heard this from is that our soil quality is what we have and our soil health is what we do with what we have and and that's uh, because it's a vital living system and and we can when we can keep it living longer keep it living 12 months out of the year instead of just eight or nine months out of the year I think we can we can develop the the organisms in the soil to to help us build that soil health Thank you.